Tuesday, the 9th of April, racing on the High Felt at the Val Race Course, the first of eight races due off at 12.35. Welcome to this Gallup TV preview show. And as always, I'm joined on the line by Alistair Cohen. Hi, Alistair. Long time since you and I did this together. Graham, unbelievable. What a pleasant surprise to hear you on the other end this morning. Um, yeah, wonderful. Um, love, uh, love to catch up and uh, looking forward to this Tuesday part. Obviously, um, the dust has settled on Turpentine after Saturday. I thought it was a wonderful race. Meaning obviously, a couple of short class favorites going missing in the juvenile races, but Give me another remains unbeaten, and the world looks like it's so oyster. I thought um, some of the other wins were out the top draw. Thunderstruck showing that tenacity that he showed when winning the Kaya Stables, Garden Stakes, yet again in the Johnson work with computer form sprint. So, uh, lots of reasons to be excited leading into champion season, which officially gets underway in less than a month from now. And I think uh, on the back of what happened on Saturday leading into the sales world, the good news that's around. Very exciting time to be a racing fan in South Africa. Yeah, it was a wonderful day of racing and talking about short-priced uh, favourite juveniles getting rolled over, in particular during the early part of the race card. But uh, clearly the winners were not winning out of turn either, but in the first of the eight races at the Vaal on Tuesday, uh, we've got a juvenile plate over a thousand metres and we have another short-priced favourite in the form of number one, Buffalo Storm C uh, Cody for the C Storm. Syndicate, Tony Peter trains, Kelvin Abib rides, 4 to 10, won by 9 links on debut. I've noted in your 96 Rand bipod perm, uh, you've had no hesitation in bankering number one, Buffalo Storm Cody. I think this is the tonic that the yard uh, needs, and probably the tonic that the yard is going to get. His maiden win was out of the top draw. He got away a little bit gingerly, um, but he recovered very quickly to show a lot of pace, and he extended and got stronger as the race went on. I know the runner-up Bad Medicine's held in fairly high regard and uh, and he made Bad Medicine, although Bad Medicine's a horse that's expected to improve with runs and over a little bit further than a thousand metres, but uh, he made a highly false and false look pretty ordinary. Um, so the point I'm making with that particular um, statement is that I think the four man is going to work out, even though Buffalo Song Cody won by nine, probably generally the law of average is just there might not be too much behind but i think in this case there was i was the first trip to the vial and see that being much of an issue i think the biggest um advice that i can give punters leading up to the race meeting is the configuration of the false rail it looks like the outside draws are going to be uh, at an advantage on the day but he's drawn five bang in the middle i don't see too many hassles for him and i think he'll win so as far as the bipod is concerned i think he's a banker although i think there are a few progressive horses in the race i just think that he he looks like he's got so much in his favour and a lot going for him. Let's just give number five, Kimrick, a little bit of air time because although still a maiden, runner-up in its last, uh, in its only two starts, that second behind M Mount Minatubo, giving, given that Mount Minatubo ran second in the nursery, that form is starting to look good. Definitely is. Um, I think he warrants a lot of this. Picture Graham does uh, as Tim Rick, he's obviously a half brother to the now departed Egyptian Mao. I think she was on the uh, the flight overseas. And um, out of that form, obviously, Legend of Arthur came out and won, and he won a while. But he won a while. Um, I'm looking at the margin between third and fourth. There was 12 lengths between third and fourth. Legend of Arthur and I belong. So Kim Rick's got to be given solid claims, especially on the back of what Mount Pinatubo did in the nursery on Saturday. But I think he'll need to still find a little bit more to turn over a horse that won by nine lengths. Second race is a juvenile plate for fillies this time, over a thousand metres. Second leg of the bipod, first leg of the place accumulator, race off at 13.10. And here we have the betting suggesting it's a match in two. Number six, Peace of Mind, is at 15 to 10, off the back of three consecutive runner up berths. Golden Chandelier comes into the race on a hat trick and is interestingly the second choice in the early market at around 18 to 10. Number five, Katiwe's Destiny, the first timer for the Hollywood Syndicate, also by Buffalo Bill Cody, is at five to one. Number seven, Valiva, is at seven to one, and the rest are in double figures. Now, it's interesting. I've had a look at your bipod, as I mentioned earlier. You've gone with numbers one, Golden Chandelier, and seven, Valiva. You're brassing, in the bipod at least, number six, Peace of Mind. I am brassing number six piece of mind because I'm going to take the golden chandelier form at face value, Graham. Believers five kilos better off for a one and a half length beating. Ignore the last one from Believer. Being by of a tippy mare, that swing speed. 
out and out speed and uh, she probably didn't get home over 1200 meters when she was eased out of the race and ran as far as 400 to finish so i think that explains the flat last run from believer and i think coming back to a thousand meters she's going to have a good chance of at least showing what she showed at a penultimate start behind Golden Chandelier, who, as you rightly mentioned, is seeking a hat trick of wins. Went down to Hollywood Bets Gravel, beat one pass from start to finish last time out. Has an inside draw to contend with, but that said, in a field of seven, if you were drawn sort of six off the outside in a field of 18 at the VAR, you wouldn't worry too much. And I think that she's got the pace to get over. And uh, if she is going to be effective, she could be hard to top from the front and therefore getting to what's foreseen to be the right side of the track. So I'm pretty comfortable with these numbers. But I think the, the weight turnaround with number seven for Lever, she clearly represents the value in the race. I know nothing about number five, Katiwa's Destiny, other than her name was changed from Chicken Fry to Katiwa's Destiny. So I think that uh, I think the Hollywood team have, uh, have certainly upgraded the name from Chicken Fry. And then number six, Peace of Mind, she deserves a mention. There's no doubt about it. The yard and the riders in good form. But... I don't think her form lines are all that hot, other than the run to Almond Sea, a second start to Almond Sea, where Almond Sea was just cantering for a thousand meters. And I think Peace of Mind was splattered by that two and three quarters, or by that five and a quarter and eight beating, rather. I don't know, Graham, I think that uh, even though she got 55 kilos on her back, I think she's going to be held here by the out and out speed of Believer and, and obviously the winning form of number one Golden Chandelier. Okay, then let's move on to the third race. First leg of the pick six. It's a Competitive Phillies and Mares 95 handicap over 1,200 metres. Opening leg of the pick six goes off at 13.45. They're betting very wide here. So those 10 to 1 and shorter in the market in numerical order. Number three, Just Be Lecker, 10 to 1. Number four, Leaving Las Vegas, 8 to 1. Number seven, Wings With In Me, 7 to 1. Number 10, Woman of Fame at 9 to 2. Top of the boards is number 11, War Queen at 33 to 10. And number 12, Go Check With Love, is at 9 to 2. Those are the ones that are in the betting. Um, Alistair's gone with four horses, 3, 7, 10, and 12 in this leg of the bipod. But to hear more about the race, here's Alistair. And Alistair, let's start with Candace's runner, number 3, Just Be Lacquer. Well, Graham, Just Be Lacquer, um, I'd like to believe it's going to have a good chance in this race. It's the hardest race in the card. The betting suggests that. She returned to Joburg last time and she was just a, a, a ball of nerves, really. She pulled in the early stages. Um, she just wasn't herself, but she seems to have taken that run very well and she's back on track and behaving uh, better at work. So she'll run a better race. The quandary that Candice is in is what is her best trip because she obviously beat Bavarian Beauty over 1,200 metres, obviously arguing that Bavarian Beauty is a better mile having won a grade one over a mile. Um, but she beat Bavarian Beauty over this course and distance in the dead of winter in July and then ran very close to Feather Boa, who was certainly up with the best fillies of her generation. And then obviously her run on the gold rush, although the form is not really standing up all that well. It was an excellent run. She was easily the first Philly home, uh, finishing two and a half lanes behind Rapidash. She had gate one. That was over a mile. So what is her best trip? That's the head-scratching question at the moment. But she'll run a better race than she did last time, so I'm not prepared to let her run loose, especially with the yard in good form and confidence up at HQ. And my top selection here, Graham, is number 10, Woman of Fame, she had no right to win her last start over a 1,000 metres. She ran that 1,200 metres. was going to be her best trip. Um, Richard Ferry literally beat a lot out of her. She was off the bridle um, the whole way until she finally got into the, the swing of things about 200 metres out and ran away from Lovegrass, who was expected to be a big runner on that card. And I think she got away lightly with a three-pound penalty. And she comes in here with a light weight, probably well-placed by Sean Terry. So I, I like what I saw from number 10, Woman of Fame. I think there are wins to come from her. And I make her my top selection. Um, other horses that come into the picture, I think number 12, Go Check with Love, wherever Woman of Fame runs. Go Check with Love at the weight should be right there. She gets a very favourable swing at the weight. 52 kilos, Musi Yeni on her back. There's no way you can let number 12, Go Check with Love, run loose, especially considering that she likely needed her last run. So she comes into the picture as well. And the other horse I've got into the play here is number seven, Wings Within Me. So I've sidestepped the favourite, Wolf Queen. Wings within me last time, ranked time for Orchids, time for Orchids. I'm beaten on the Hammerfelds. Um, she's four from four, even though she received seven kilos from time for Orchids. I'd still like to believe that the time for Orchids wasn't here of 63 kilos. I'd bank her and all that. So simply on, on that line of thinking, number seven wings within me, I think she's got a little bit to, to prove here. And I think she's capable of at least getting into the mix. 
Competitive start to the pick six. Number 10, Women of Fame, Alistair's first choice, but they're looking for a much better run from number three, Just Be Lacquer. And of course, include all of those that Alistair gave a mention to. Race four, first leg of Jackpot One. Another Phillies and Mares handicap, this time at the 80 level, over 1,200 metres. The fourth race off at 14.20. Top of the boards, number one, Mia Fiore, Five-length winner of a penultimate start and then a beaten favourite last time. Number two, Alicia's Love is at 11 to 2. Number four, Quick Trip, who's finding her feet on the high felt, is at 9 to 2. They're betting 10 to 1 about uh, Lil Miss Bag. Sahara Dawn is at 8 to 1. Lady Elliot, who's fancied uh, by Alistair, as we will hear in a moment, that's on offer at 10 to 1. Number 11, Raining Rubies who was a big surprise winner last time out, is at 8-1. to one. So we've got an 11-strong field for this Phillies and Mayors 80 handicap over 1,200 metres to Alistair. You've gone with numbers 1 and 10. Is Mia Fiore drawn on the stand side of the track your top choice? That's why she's my top choice. I have one disclaimer about her, though, Graham. Um, I left her out last time when she went off as favourite and ran half a length third to lose in the spine. That run weirdly impressed me more than her five-length victory over Kachia was all at her penultimate start. There are a few factors with Mia Fiore, like you hit a lot of this to get her sound, hence she's likely raced as a five-year-old, but obviously now with three runs in the space of less than a month, she's obviously sound, feeling good, and, and that's proven by the form that she's displaying at the moment. But I was not impressed with how the handicapper treated her for that win, giving her an eight-pound penalty for winning, winning a Phillies and May 72. With that said, the handicap is probably not far off the mark, having backed that up with a good run, beaten half a length by Lucy in the start. So the reason that I'm making a good case for her, despite the penalty that she couldn't win under last time, is because she's drawn towards the outside. And like you did a lot, is obviously happy with the shape that she's in, considering she's got a bit of a reputation of not being the easiest to get to the races. But number 10, Lady Elliott, if she had a high number draw, I would make her a very strong first selection. It might look like she's lost her way. She probably isn't at her absolute best. But, damn, her racing has come down from an 88, down another pound to a 71. She's had her excuses. She returned not starting out last time. Musi Yeni is the only jockey to have got a tune out of her as well. She was highly thought of. When I say highly thought of, I think she probably underachieved in that she's regress rather than progress out of a two-year-old campaign. You look at her runs early doors, it shows that there was a, a decent amount of ability there. And I, I've just got a niggly feeling that she's going to bounce back sooner rather than later. And I think now is just about the time to strike with her. Like I said, high number draw would make me very bullish about her chances. So I'm just a little bit tentative about really pushing in with, uh, with a few chips with number 10, Lady Elliot. But I would recommend including her into all bets and certainly in each way suggestion at 10 to 1. I think that's a very appealing price about a horse that I think is just about in the right place at the right time now. Uh, just very quickly, Alistair, you've gone with numbers 1 and 10 and you've made a case for each of them. If you were to add one more into the mix, who would be your third choice? Third uh, would be quick trip, Graham. I know that the form of her maiden win hasn't worked out, but she dominated that from start to finish. Cabello Matsignani had... Oh, would it be his best day in the saddle on, on Saturday? If it wasn't, it was easily his second best day in the saddle after the Hollywood bets to Irvin Chilai with Winchester Mansion. Um, so he'll be he'll be as confident as ever. Um, as you said in the opening to this race, Quick Trip has certainly found her feet here on the half up. She patently didn't get home over 14.50 on her first start, which was still not a terrible effort from, from the worst of the draw. But I think that was the display of her running style, being able to go forward and being difficult to beat. Hopefully there's not much rain around. I see the forecast for Joburg is pretty dicey leading up to this meeting, but obviously there hasn't been much rain around Joburg at all this summer. So, uh, so I think the rain would be more of a blessing than a, than a curse. So if it doesn't come up too soft, then number four quick trip on a, on a fast running track could be quite dangerous. You'll be my next best. Race five, first leg of Jackpot 2, MR96 handicap over 1,800 metres, off at 14.55. Another extremely competitive handicap. Number one, Terra Time, 10 to 1. Number three, Willow's Wish, 15 to 2. Number six, Miller Hugh is at 8 to 1. Number seven, Sugar Blast, uh, now back on the high felt, having campaigned recently for Tinny Prince Lure. In uh, KwaZulu Natal, now with the Tony Peters stable. First up for him, that's at 11 to 2. Number 8, Trois Trois Quatre at 6 to 1. 
Still frustrating to follow. Number 10, poor little rich girl. Game as ever is at 5 to 1. Number 11 in the brief is at 10 to 1. Those are the one quoted 10 to 1 and shorter. Now, as I mentioned right throughout the show, I've had a sneak preview of the bipod, which we'll recap at the end of the show. I know that Alistair's gone with 8, 3, 3, 4, 10, poor little rich girl, and 11 in the brief. Let us hear some more, Alistair. Take us through the race. I like poor little rich girl here, Graham. I think that she's turned the corner and become a reasonable little filly up on the half off. Uh, they're going Pavelo Mazzagnani and then Brett Crawford team up here. Brett's been up in Joburg for the better part of two weeks. And this three-time winner, wherever Twatwa cuts, is poor little rituals right there. But what poor little rituals got that Twatwa cut probably doesn't is a bit of heart and desire to get the job done. You spot on about Twatwa cut, and that he is still frustrating to follow. He's 220 days since his last win. And poor little rituals, one of those horses who just keeps getting his number. Um, on the run on the 9th of March, that's the race that I'm going to use as my line of thinking. Twatwa cut has got a quarter of a length to turn around with poor little ritual and has got a very valuable swing at the weights the tune of a length and a half but again I, I get the feeling that a poor little rich girl the more you, you throw at her the more that she would have kept passing on that occasion but then logically that does bring the owner companion uh to, 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 to cut into the picture i thought his last time was just disappointing he lost it at the start he didn't really recover i think the more positively you ride and the better that he produces so i'm willing to give him another chance or two but he is running out of chances and i think the bottom weights are going to have a good time again number 11 the brief ran a good race last time to marauding board who was a trifle disappointing in the south african derby on saturday but i like the way the brief sort of stuck around last time and it's the under Cecibo takes a ride nice lightweight i think that he's going to be dangerous with a lightweight for the first time in a very very long time he's got the right profile after a long layoff he was off between january and december and he's been building those blocks as time goes on and I think that he is he's as fit as he's ever going to be coming into this race with a lightweight could be TV place. I'm, I'm ignoring the horses off top weight. There's going to be a pace in the race with the likes of Twin Turbo from a deep draw. He's going to have no options but to set some sort of pace and get handy. You know, Hawkbill was just bitterly disappointing last time. Uh, Miller Hugh, who I think is a reasonable horse, is likely to need the run on the back of what obviously went wrong last time. Uh, Sugar Blast is just or don't leave them out of the pick six, but in the bar from place accumulator, I'm happy with my numbers. Eight, ten, and eleven. Race six, uh, the racing today, graduation plate. So this is not a handicap. Things are supposed to get a little easier in race six for us. Over 1,400 metres, we do have an early odds-on favourite in the form of number one, Barber Resco, at 13 to 20. Comes out of the SA Classic, where, of course, he raced over 1,800 metres and finished six and a half lengths behind Purple Pitcher. Now the subsequent Tab SA Derby winner as well. But probably better over 1,400 metres. We'll hear more from Alistair. Number two, Wise Act, 8 to 1. Number four, the Africa House, 7 to 1. Five, Lady Fallon, 6 to 1. Now, number six, Platina Princess is amongst those quoted, not yet scratched, but uh, surely ineligible now as a three-time winner for a graduation plate. So I'm expecting number six, Platina Princess, to come out. She was quoted 7 to 1 when I caught up with the betting, so there'll be some adjustments. But... Number one, Barber Resco, a clear favourite, but I noticed you haven't banked him. I haven't banked him, Graham, because I think there's a bigger picture with the Africa House, who is probably more frustrated than Captain Brock be one of the more frustrating horses in the entire country. He won his debut, looked the part, and expectations were high, as you can tell by the placement of him. But what I like about the Africa House, there are a couple of things here, Graham. He was part of the Bali Turk of Hollywood Best Label just over a week earlier. He was scratched due to transport complications. Um, but that obviously allowed him to, to run within the, uh, the window of the NHA rules. And this race obviously presented itself. So I get the feeling that there might be a bigger picture here with number four, the Africa House. I know this is a graduation date, but he's yet to run in a handicap of the Africa House. So I'd be very interested to see when, when he eventually gets to those uh, those um, class races, especially with his rating, which is uh, currently at 102. Might need a little bit more help in a handicap. But I think that he's still got something to prove, number four, the Africa House. But he has got number one, Bob Oresco, to be a grand was it the outclassed last time? Was it a combination of the class and the distance in the Grade 1 South African Classic? Probably, yes. There's been ultimate win over Stinky Mapimpi was one that you don't see too often at Serpentine because Ryan Munger just thought, well, I'm going to throw caution to the wind here. I'm going to send the horse far earlier than I should. I know I'm on the best horse in the race. And at 5 to 10, he 
been duly delivered beating Cynthia Mpimpi, obviously off a similar weight and Cynthia Mpimpi is a horse that has run with reasonable opposition. His claim to obviously running just a big time in defender and receipts of two kilograms in the three trade mistakes and I think that run alone and that performance alone is of a higher quality than anyone else brings into this race. So one and four, the two Verners will stress to in the African house are the two for me with healthy respect for number five lady and uh, going to half of Francis Ethel, obviously receiving quite a bit of weight, uh, rather giving quite a bit of weight to Francis Ethel. And uh, we all know where Francis Ethel is now. She's uh, <laughs> she's just an Oaks winner. Absolutely. But of course, Barbara Resco returning to the 1400 metres. And as you heard there from Alistair, I think the key run was when he ran second behind main defender over this trip and prior in his career over 1200 metres, second behind Sandringham Summit. So the class is there, but there's no doubt that Sean Terry has been pulling his hair out with the Africa House, who's under-delivered thus far. Race 7, low-grade Phillies and Mares, 66 handicap over 1,400 metres. I'm tempted to say, good luck, Alistair. Indeed, this is the reason why I didn't go with a place accumulator or a pick six. I like a horse going to be at a bit of a price here, Graham. I think number 12, Count Your Chances, is worth a second glance uh, with an outside draw in the back of a rating drop with hints of some good recent performances, also hints of some very ordinary recent performances. But her last run, she was left with quite a lot to do. She made up a little bit of ground. She finished off her race quite nicely. Chase Morjan is on board here for Farney Broncos. I think Farney's actually got quite a strong hand here. I think all three of his runners here have legitimate chances, and I think that he'll be interviewed after the race as the winning trainer. But I'm going to take a a stab in the dark that the one with the bigger price might be the value in the race. If not winning, I think she'll make Tribatus and Quartet's pay. As you know, the Vol Strait can be a, a, a very much a specialist course. She's run four times over this course in distance for two places yet to win. I think that's pretty much where she fits in with a good place chance. Number 12 can't do a chance. So the point I'm making, if you are in a little bit of trouble on the day, then she is definitely worth an each way going. If, uh, if the place value is is on her side, then she's definitely worth a few rand on that. But the stable companion is coming to the picture. Three Cerulean dancers running very nasty at the moment. She's got an inside draw to contend with, but she seems to have enough pace, so she's lucky to get towards the middle outside and, and probably be in the early vanguard. And then number five, Dancing Dora ran against boys at her last three starts without being desperately disgraced. Gavin Lorena is on board. She's also on the back of a slight rating reduction. In fact, she's come down quite steadily over the space of the last 10 starts without being able to get a win. That's the worry. Winning comes on for number five, Dance and Dora. When she does win, she really puts it all on the line. She kind of scrapes in. So she's not the most... She's not the easiest to follow with number five, Dancing Dora. But I think Barney Broncos is going to win the race. If you ask me which one's got the best winning chance, it would be number three, Cerulean Dancer, with an inside draw, which is a worry. But there's no doubt the money maker in the race is the bigger outsider of the three, number 12, counter chances. Barney Broncos team, to, the ones to follow in the seventh race, that lowly rated 66 handicap. The eighth and final race goes off at 16.40. It's an MR80 handicap over 1,400 metres. And again, being a handicap, it is wide open. Many runners quoted in the market. Number one, Bob's your uncle at 8 to 1. Number two, Simple Simple at 10 to 1. Four, Cent Master makes his second racetrack appearance of a winning debut back in March. Cent Masters at 7 to 1. Then uh, nine, Willow Express. 695 days without a win is at 7 to 1. 10 Archimedes, 10 to 1. 11 Cash Cavell, 8 to 1. 12 Open Highway, a very weak market leader at 5 to 1. 13 Holocene knocking loudly at the door is at 8 to 1. Those are the ones quoted 10 to 1 and below. And as the market suggests, betting 5 to 1 the field, not an easy way to end off the day. Not at all. And there's some of my good old favourites that have done me favours along the way and also done me a few dirties along the way in this race. I mean, they include the likes of Nordic Rebel, Whirly Whirly, uh, Will Willow Express, I'm married to Archimedes, Cash Cavell, who I liked very, very strongly at his penultimate start and followed up by winning Open Harvey, who I made a good thing last time and I'm still feeling the effects. Written in stone, who I don't particularly like at the ball. So these are all horses that have been on my radar for a very, 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 very long time. And now Holocene has emerged on my radar, Graham. I'm going to take a stab with him. Musi Yeni on board for Mike DeCock. I thought it was a good run last time behind Judgment Day. He's obviously very progressive. I know that it's been a while since he's won his maiden, but he beat Master Christmas, and Master Christmas was a fluent winner 
at the Vol on Thursday, beating a field of much, much better quality. 25th of January, I think that's the run that you really need to focus on behind Warhawk Bomber. Granted, perhaps a little bit of a softer Warhawk Bomber at the time, but he's gone through a couple of extra divisions since that win. And I think the Holocene dropping in distance, that could be the key here for the Son of Heavenly Blue. What I like is that Musi Yeni retains the ride. There's probably an element of Musi getting off and saying, I like to ride him over a little bit shorter the next time he runs. So that wish is likely being granted here. Another horse that's obviously not going to Hollywood with one win from 19 starts, but I think he's just about in the right place to give a good account of himself. It's a quartet race that you've never seen before. You'd love to get involved in the quartet here. And the numbers that I'm going to double float with a field are 5 and 13 with a field. I think Nordic Rebel down the straight, always a force. He was carded to run not so long ago. And I'll tell you what happened. Gavin Arena was double engaged, and Eric Verden has decided, right, I'm going to do a favour, because two weeks later, there's another race for him, and obviously, at the age of 10, you know, you've got to wrap him up in pots and wool and get him going, and I know that this race was targeted from, it was the day that Jury's out one of the Gavin Arena, so that's why I know the whole story, so uh, so Gavin obviously gave Eric his, his word, I ride him the day that you want to run him in a couple of weeks' time, and uh, and here we go, down the straights at the Val with his good mate Gavin Arena on board, outside draw, I think the 10-year-old, if not winning, is going to give another honest honest performance. So that's my quartet plan the last round. Before we get to your buy part, uh, just a quick word about the track. In fact, you mentioned Jury's Out winning on the 19th of March. Whirly Whirly comes out of that form line as well. Now, the reason I'm bringing it up is because on that occasion, all of a sudden, the horses drawn to the far side with the low numbers did well. Whirly Whirly was drawn deep out at 15 and didn't disgrace himself finishing four and a half lengths behind juries out given that, that the finishers that day were dominated by runners drawn on the far side low number draws in other words which was a bit of a surprise because generally speaking down the straight you want to be on the stand side of the track so what do we make of that what are you expecting from that perspective uh, on tuesday Definitely a player, Graham. If you consider that Master Christmas was just in front of him on the same side of the track, um, also cursed with a high number draw on a day that the inside draws and the inside rail was set up for those, um, really, really is not one to be taken lightly. The interesting factor, I'd be very, I'd be a lot more bullish if Pierce Stratham was taking the ride on really, really. Obviously, 57 and a half for a 58 year old's not too straightforward these days. Um, but he's in the same boat as, as, uh, as number five Nordic Rebel, lovable old soldier. He gives him his best, 13 time winner. But I think Nordic Rebel's just probably more set up for this race. That's the way that I read it between the two. Well, there we go. Let's uh, close out this. Uh GTV preview show, Gallup TV preview show with uh, a quick look at uh, Alistair's 96 strand bipod perm. Alistair, take us through it. Yeah, so that gets underway in race number one at 25 to 1 on this uh, Tuesday out at the Vile Bank for one Buffalo Storm Cody in the first leg. They're up one with uh, probably the best of two evils in, the, in race two. The, the, uh, the heavyweight golden chandelier and then the seventh believer uh, coming back to a thousand meters in race three. For me, the hardest leg of the bar pod. If you're uncomfortable, throw a couple others in. Number three, just be lacquer with seven wings within me. Ten women of fame, our top choice. And number 12, go check with love. Then race four, leg four, one Mia Fiore and ten Lady Elliot. Race five, leg five, eight, five, five, cut, ten for a little rich for the two Hollywood horses and then backing them up with number 11, the three. And then the final leg on one and four, Barbara Resto in the Africa house and actually hoping to double up there and, and bolster the powers, hopefully. Thank you, Alistair. Thanks for your input. Have a good day. That's our show for the Vile Race Meeting, Tuesday, the 9th of April, the first of eight races off at 12.35.